outcome is in TBI is, is really a wide range of things. And that's part of what challenges measuring outcome. So it, it could be something as basic as opening your eyes after a severe brain injury and beginning to interact with the environment. For some, some interventions, that might be the targeted outcome, is just to get people to that next level. You know, for a lot of uh, early interventions, the outcome might be, can the person remember new events day to day? So, you know, very low level things, all the way up to, you know, uh, kind of in, in more of the post-acute or, or, you know, sometime after a severe injury, can the person re-enter the community? Can they get back to work? Can they re-engage with their family? Uh, can they manage symptoms like uh, depression, irritability, fatigue, you know, things that often to which they're often more vulnerable after a TBI. So it's this, this whole range, you know, from, from uh, as I said, very basic functions to fairly high level functions. And, you know, some, some things that uh, people without a TBI may have, you know, like headaches and fatigue. It's just that after a brain injury, you may be more vulnerable to those. So in, in measuring outcome, uh, the, one concept that has become increasingly recognized in, in recent years is, is the idea that a good outcome measure is kind of like steps on a ladder. And, and, and you know, each time a person moves up a step, then what's the next step, you know? The disability rating scale is one of the oldest measures of outcome uh, and uh, probably one of the most frequently used. A lot, that that and, and the Glasgow Outcome Scale are probably the most commonly used measures. And both of them try to measure the entire range uh, of, of outcomes. So, you know, from very low level, in fact, on the Glasgow Outcome Scale, the lowest level is dead. Uh, you know, on the disability rating scale, it's, it's again, can you open your eyes? Uh, and up to the highest levels. So uh, uh, for the disability rating scale, the, the, the higher levels uh, have to do with your employability. So it's a fairly brief measure. It has eight items total. And you know, with those eight items, uh, attempts to measure that, that uh, full range, as the authors put it in their original article, from coma to community. So, uh, We've just done a study uh, looking at the disability rating scale and attempting to, to standardize the administration a little more and also to improve on it just a little to get, because it, uh, it has one of the problems with the disability rating scale is even people with moderate to severe brain injury after the first year, uh, up to 40% will score zero or one, I mean almost normal, which, which probably doesn't reflect reality. You know, most of those people are going to have some problems that just aren't captured by the scale because it's not, not that sensitive. Uh, you know, measures like the Glasgow Outcome Scale and the Disability Rating Scale are kind of like measuring height with a ruler that just has feet on it. <laughs> you know, so, so you can say, yeah, this person's a five or six footer, you know, <laughs> but, but you can't really get the precision. That's not necessarily a bad thing in some applications. You know, in some applications, that's really all you want to know is, you know, are they tall or are they short? But, uh, and, and especially in outpatient rehab, or, or excuse me, brain injury rehab, uh, you know, what you may want to know is simply, you know, does a person need an intensive lower level program, you know, a mid-range program or a high-range program? And, uh, in, in applications like that, you know, the disability rating scale may work just fine. If you want, if you want more precision at any of those levels, you may need to think about some other measures.